Welcome to another episode of Data Journeys. I'm Bruno Ziza, and I'm excited to be here today with Bob from Geotab. And so we're going to learn from him about his journey and the amazing growth and success he's had. And he's also going to share with us his do's and his don'ts. Bob, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Before we get started, tell us a little bit about Geotab. Hey, Bruno, no problem. Uh, yeah, so Geotab is a world leader in the telematics space. And so really what that means is we have millions of connected vehicles. In fact, we have over 2 million connected vehicles driving around with our little device inside of them around the world and really, really dense population of vehicles here in North America and, and the large population in Europe, Latin America, and, and Geotab has been expanding pretty rapidly over the past few years. And so it gives us a really, really unique look at the world we live in from a data perspective, because this data is immensely useful for fleet managers. So they're using it to manage where their vehicles go and company operations, but on aggregate, these 2 million vehicles can tell us what the temperature is on the side of the road and whether a road is bumpy in the, in the middle of Europe or, or in the middle of the United States. And we can learn an awful lot about cities around us and whether intersections take longer at certain times of the day and what traffic patterns look like. And so, you know, over the past five years that I've been at Geotab, we've gone from about 400,000 of these connected devices to somewhere in the 2.2 million uh, neighborhood today. And so that kind of growth has been both amazing and a challenge for us. And now the data that you collect, of course, is 24-7. It's real time. You know, tell us a little about the, the volume there. Yeah, the data we collect, you're right, is real time and 24-7. Customers of Geotab range from small mom and pop trucking companies to emergency services. So the data needs to be correct and timely. And so we're streaming this data in every single day. From a data and analytics perspective, that means about 40 billion points of data that we get to play with every single day. And I think we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 petabytes of data sitting in Google BigQuery, which is our data warehouse of choice. So we're definitely talking about large data set, fast moving data set, the products involved here, we're talking about BigQuery, data flow, real time data, Cloud Composer. Tell us a little bit about the use cases specifically that you're using these products for. Sure. Uh, so our customers are monitoring their fleets, uh, their own fleets, looking at their own operations. But as a whole, if we can take these 2.1 million vehicles and we can take this data that's coming in at that pace and we can actually run analytics on that, there's a lot we can learn and teach our customers about their data. So one of the use cases that comes to mind is we had a customers that were telling us that battery breakdowns were, were a big problem. And so we have fleets that are one vehicle, but we also have fleets that might be 100,000 vehicles. And so if you scale up roadside breakdowns, the batteries themselves aren't very expensive, but when you're saying 80% of our on-road breakdowns happen because of electrical systems, it's not the battery, it's not the part, it's the sending of a tow truck, it's the tow, it's the sending of a mechanic and the replacing of these parts that become very, very expensive. And so we started a POC. One of, one of the things that I really believe in is getting customers involved first so we can really truly understand the customer problem. And so we thought, okay, this particular customer has a large fleet, but in the, in the 2.1 million vehicles, there's tens of thousands of other vehicles that drive and operate in similar conditions with similar engine types. What can we learn from the group that we can then help this customer identify batteries that potentially could fail? And so we did a four month POC with a very, very large fleet. And the goal was to reduce these roadside breakdowns. They're expensive, product doesn't get to the door, SLAs are broken. And I think, you know, there were some learnings here as well. I mean, I think our goal on the onset was, oh, it's a predictive maintenance problem. Everybody talks about mean time to fail. We need to tell this customer within three days, your battery is going to fail. And what we learned through the short PLC was that that really wasn't what we needed to do. What we needed to do was help this customer with so many vehicles understand which of their vehicles are exhibiting electrical systems issues and which of their vehicles appear to have bad batteries or, or, or don't look normal as it, as it compares to the rest of the 2.1 million vehicles that operate like they do. And so it was a, a pretty successful little POC that has now spun into, a, into a, a core product that we can offer to customers in that we were able to reduce their downtime by you know, almost 20, 25% of the roadside downtime was reduced. And there was a, you know, little side effects that we didn't expect. We had 10%, uh, almost 10% of less labor costs because there weren't so many surprise battery replacements or electrical systems tests on the side of the road. So it was a great little POC. Of course, then the problem becomes how do you scale from one customer to many customers? And I think because we use Google BigQuery and some of those tools as our core data warehouse, and because that's where we run a lot of our experiments, the scaling issue uh, becomes non-existent for us as we, as we scale up and, and we just 
kind of lean in on some of that capacity that that is offered to us by some of those products. And you have been able to scale it as you know as much innovation as as you put out here. Actually, I think you you have about eight patents. Uh, on this yeah. particular uh, use case particular, uh, as an outcome? Case, yeah, yeah there are, there's about eight patents on that particular use case right now as an outcome. And, uh, you know, we're, we're able to scale this up and generalize uh, the solution. And, you know, it'll, we'll be rolling out live with it. Actually, it took us about a year. Um, you know, what makes us unique as well as a company is since we manufacture the hardware, we're able to push out updates. So it became a, a real team effort at Geotab in that we actually discovered new novel ways of recording some of this information and detecting changes to make the product even better. So it was a bit of an iterative process with the uh, the whole engineering side of the company to get this out there. But yeah, scale hasn't scale has never been the problem. You know, ingesting the data hasn't been a problem, and running queries over the data and models over the data hasn't been the problem, uh, which really frees us up then to to work hand in hand with customers and really focusing on on what uh, the the actual mechanical problem is. So that's quite an amazing journey, starting with one customer and then expanding that to the rest of, uh, of your fleet and understanding this at a million data points at a time and, and with the outcome with an amazing recognition for your innovation. What have you learned through the process here? What are some of the do's and the don'ts here? Maybe let's start with the positive first. What are some of the things that are the do's that everybody here listening to us should go out and do? I think, you know, the one one thing that taught us an awful lot and it had kind of a waterfall effect in lessons was engaging with customers early in the process. You know, the first few years I've been with Geotab for about five years and the data team was quite small at the time and we've grown rapidly. And those first few years were really learning and exploring and playing with the data and with customers to to understand the value that we could then derive out of it in the years to come. And and so working with customers closely and early allowed us to start conducting research with a clear path to product. So we weren't conducting mm-hmm. research for the sake of research, but with a clear path, like an applied research approach where we, the outcome should solve a business problem. And, you know, really the, the object was to fail fast. The, the four month PLC wasn't, you know, was, was one of many four month PLCs and those other ones, you know, if we fail fast and pivot, uh, we can get to a solution a little bit quicker. I think one of the biggest learnings for any of us engineers, we wanted to make these 99%, like I said, mean time to fail, 99% accurate models. Uh, when at the end of the day, we're saving real money and, and saving real downtime for customers without needing to be 99% accurate. So I think it was a lesson learned there that 99% accurate on a problem that nobody wants you to solve is, is not a good approach. Uh, better to be reasonably accurate on a, on a large scale problem that can really help folks and, and then iterate on that problem and bring up that accuracy. Yeah, it's the idea around being directionally right and then improving on that results rather than just trying to be right uh, and imperfect rather than be done. Yeah. What about the the opposite of that? What are some of the mistakes uh, that you think people listening to us should uh, look out for and try to avoid, even though they you know they, they are the result of things that might have been common sense in the first place? I've said this before. I think I think I've said it at, at some of your offices uh, doing a small talk. One of the best things about say a product like Google BigQuery is that it's very, very easy to get your data into Google BigQuery and move it around. And one of the worst things about Google BigQuery is that it's very, very easy to get your data into Google <laughs> BigQuery. And you know, one of the things that Geotab did early on was we, we started pushing as much data as we could into Google BigQuery. So it's not just the vehicle data, it's, it's operational data. It's all of our server metrics, application logs. That really, really helps us triage your problem from beginning to end. So definitely would not change how we did that. But in doing so, you know, you can't lag data governance and data ops far behind because you end up with multiple sources of ground truth or disparate data sets that are trying to answer the same problem. And so I think mm-hmm. with that ease of use and ease of getting data into BigQuery came some hiccups along the way where, you know, we need to now clean up some of those resources and we need to figure out which of A and B is ground truth to solve this problem. So those data silos can, can happen pretty quickly. Yeah, and they can cost you a lot yeah. down the line. Did you have to hire different types of folks to make sure that you'd manage for that? Or how did you build it into the process? Yeah, over time, I think we, we started out heavy on the science and analyst side of things because the, the man, we have so many managed services that we leverage from you guys. But over time, uh, we started to pick up many, many more data engineers and folks that are focused on pipelines and best practices, uh, data governance and data operations. So so yeah, I think there was a fundamental shift there. What was amazing about it, as I said, those first few years that I spent anyways at Geotab were a lot of experimentation and a lot of playing and, and we didn't have to worry about the overhead of pipelines and things like that. But now as things become mature in products, we need to make sure that those pipelines run, that there's monitoring and SLAs and, and all of those fun things. And, and I think that we've played catch up a little bit there. 
That's outstanding, Bob. Thank you so much for sharing these lessons with us today. You know, I learned a lot about building data products means engaging with customers early. And in your case, you learned from one customer and scaled it to uh, the rest of them. So it's really quite amazing. Eight patents, an incredible story there. And then the don't is don't wait to implement data ops and data governance early, uh, maybe through data engineers uh, that you might want to hire or a change in your, in your process so you can avoid data silos because they could cost you a lot throughout the journey. Again, like I said, thanks for giving us the time today. I hope many people are going to reach out to you and connect with you. They've got a lot to learn from Geotab. We appreciate your time and we appreciate you being a great partner of ours. We'll talk to you soon. No problem. Thanks, Bruno.